The following is based on true events. You won't believe a word of it, I know. I don't blame you. This is YouTube after all. But at least here, I can tell you my story. At least, there's a chance that one of you will believe me. And even if you don't, maybe you'll be scared enough to lock your doors. If you see him on Halloween, walking with the trick-or-treaters, call the police right away. It started with a screen door. My dog, Molly, she was barking her head off, looking out into the wooded backyard. She barks at everything. Everyone in the neighborhood knows it. And everyone knows that she's prone to run out of the house and chase after whatever catches her eye, whether it's a small animal or a kid on a bike. It's my own fault for keeping the sliding glass door open. But I wanted to let the breeze in. And then, before I knew it, my Scottish terrier pounced onto the screen door, knocking it onto the grass and darting outside. I, of course, chased after her, not taking the time to close the door behind me. Thank God, too, because... I snatched her out of the street, just as some idiot in a red truck was barreling through the neighborhood without looking. I told my dad about it when he got home from work. He did his usual reprimanding, telling me to be more responsible with my dog, but nothing more. That was the night that I heard the footsteps in the attic. It sounded like creaking of the old house at first. A heavy, plodding sound. But then it turned into scurrying. It woke both me and my dad up. He pulled the string on the hallway ceiling, lowering the attic door and climbing in ahead of me. We searched as much of the massive room as we could, but most of it It was crammed with cardboard boxes. In the end, we found nothing unusual. My dad assumed that it had just been rats, but that didn't make either of us feel any better. My dad did, however, notice one cardboard box in the center of the attic, separated from the rest. Inside it, we found a hideous mask. Two yellow eyes stared back at us in the face of a wrinkled brown and green skin. The mask's grey, scraggly hair, it looked like a spider web. Mr. R, my dad had said with surprising delight. Mr. R, named as such because of that ugly mask had been a family tradition before my parents separated and my brother went away to college. Every Halloween season, my dad would sit Mr. Uh in a chair in the corner of the foyer. Dad would pick out the same blue sweater, beige pants, snow boots and gloves, and he would stuff it with crinkled newspapers. He would place that mask on top of it all, and then he'd put on the finishing touch. A fake rat in Mr. R's lap. He hadn't done it in years, but he figured that since this would be my last Halloween before I left for college, he'd bring Mr. R back one last time. The next morning, I woke up to find Mr. R already sitting in the foyer. I could see the bits of newspaper sticking out from under the mask. Surprisingly, Molly found Mr. R of little interest. She sniffed at his snow boots briefly and then ran along. After I came home from school that day, I quickly took Molly for a much needed walk. 
when we got back, Molly went right up to Mr. U and barked like crazy. That night, I went downstairs for a midnight snack. I took out a slice of frozen pizza from the fridge and I slammed the door shut. And then, I heard a thud all the way from the foyer. When I went over there, I saw that Mr. U uh had not moved, but the rat on his lap, it had fallen to the floor. I picked it up and I placed it back on his right leg before heading upstairs. The following morning, Molly was once again barking furiously at Mr. U. Uh. I was too lazy to stop her and I went straight for the fridge. Two slices of frozen pizza were now gone, as was a piece of chocolate cake and an entire gallon of milk. Half asleep, I assumed that my dad had taken it, although I realise now how unlikely it was for my dad to eat any of that for a midnight snack. Moments later, I grabbed a spoon from a nearby drawer, and I noticed that the large kitchen knife we kept there was gone. When I got home from school that day, Molly was not there. I checked all the doors in the house. They were all closed, including the screen door by the backyard. I think my dad was even more upset than I was when I told him that Molly was gone. Both of us searched the neighborhood for hours, yelling for her to come home, but we never found her outside. A few days passed without any sign of Molly. Other things went missing too. A can of soup here, a pair of scissors there, and even some money from my dad's wallet. He was pretty quick to blame me, but I told him I never touched his wallet. I swore it. Then one day, I noticed the smell. It was a rotten, foul stench coming from the attic. I pulled the attic string, lowering the door with a loud, metallic creak. The stench got worse. I climbed the steps, and in the darkness of the attic, I saw her. Molly was laying there on the floor, motionless. It was obvious she had been killed. It was then I heard the footsteps. They were coming from downstairs. They were heavy and quick, getting louder, heading toward me. And then I heard the front door swing open and slam shut. Shivering, I scampered away from the sound and went farther into the attic. I looked past Molly, and I saw something else. A pile of crinkled newspaper. <laughs>